What up gamers, and now we're tuned to another episode of Winds of the Far East. I'm the East Wind, and today is a game theory in regards to The Last of Us getting a sequel. Now before I continue, let me just say that this is not the same type of game theory that the game theorist does. What the game theorist does, to me, is game science. I'm not doing that. So you won't see any formulas here, no uh, computations or nothing like that. That's not the game theory I'm presenting to you. The game theory I'm presenting to you is from what was presented to us in The Last of Us. I'm not bringing any outside formulas or outside theories into this game theory I'm going to present to you. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. The reason why there cannot be a sequel to The Last of Us, because it's logically impossible. Let's get straight to the point. The ending of The Last of Us is not ambiguous. There were a number of, of comments I've read and players of The Last of Us where they said that the ending was ambiguous. And it's, it's no disrespect to them, but the ending was definitive. Here's why. Joel takes mankind's best chance for survival, Ellie, away from mankind. Okay? At that point, there is no ambiguity to the ending. The goal of The Last of Us was to get Ellie to the Fireflies so that they could start or come up with some type of countermeasure for the Cordyceps virus. It became a failure when Joel took Ellie from the operating room or out of the Firefly's hands. Therefore, there is no ambiguous ending. If Naughty Dog had to give us a A-B scenario, which they should have because the visual data I'm about to give to you is at the outset of the last of us the guy with the cracked gas mask or oxygen mask whatever you want to call it when Tess was like what are you gonna do Joel like it's obviously a tutorial for how to shoot but on my first playthrough I shot him. like you know I just that was the mindset I was in like yo realistically you know you wouldn't you know, he wouldn't want nobody to leave him like that for him to turn into a, a clicker or a quarter set. You know, I call him either or so. Whatever you call him, just insert that there. But I killed him, moved on. Once I played through the first time, because I was trying to figure out if there could be a... If there was some possibility that there could be a sequel to The Last of Us, I wanted to see what it was. So, yeah, I'm playing it three years after the fact, but that's only because I wanted to see if it was actually possible. So, for analysis, I went back and I went to see if I could leave. And it turns out that Naughty Dog actually allows you to do that. You can leave him there just like that and not shoot him at all and move on to the next area in that area and his response to that is hey don't leave me like this Tess doesn't have a response but he has a response to it so once I did that or once I saw that I automatically was just like you know I was shaking my head because if they had allowed that throughout certain points in the game they could have definitely made it possible logically for there to be a Last of Us sequel. So there's three points in the game, excluding the visual that you just saw, where a A-B scenario could have caused an ambiguous ending. So the first point in the game for an A-B scenario is when Joel and Tess first meet Ellie. Instead of Tess going with Marlene to check the weapons, Joel could have went. 
and Tess could have took Ellie to the safe house. The second AB scenario point in the game is when Joe and Ellie make it to Tommy's camp. And after Ellie, quote, runs away and Tommy and Joe go to go to find her. The AB scenario is basically role swaps. So you obviously know what I'm about to say. Instead of Joel changing his mind and taking Ellie to the lab, he stuck with what he originally said and Tommy took Ellie to the lab or tried to take Ellie to the lab. Obviously they would have to drag Joel back into the scenario. You know, somehow I'm pretty sure they would have came up with something to where Joel gets word of Tommy either getting killed or he ran into some trouble and Joel would have to go rescue Ellie and take her the rest of the way to the Fireflies. The third and final AB scenario is obvious. You obviously know what I'm going to say and that is the hospital or the operating room in the hospital. They had Joel pause at the door with his hand on the door knob. Granted, it probably was to, to emphasize disbelief on Joel's part. Or it could have been relief because he saw that they hadn't started operating yet and that Ellie was still alive. That's basically the climax of The Last of Us. And had they allowed a A-B scenario for that scenario, then the ending of The Last of Us would have been ambiguous. It would have had to come from Naughty Dog which ending was canon. Did Joel leave Ellie in that operating room? Or did he take her out of the operating room? And for the ending that was the forced ending, for the forced ending we had to complete. There's no way they can say, well, this is not canon. This is canon. It's what Joel did. He took mankind's best chance for a countermeasure against the Cordyceps virus away. I had Ellie stand at the, the edge of this Russian water to emphasize basically what the consequence of Joel's actions would result in. And it's basically the Russian water represents the Cordyceps or Clickers devouring mankind there's no way that mankind is going to come back after Joel did what he did he killed the surgeon who who knows how much time he's researched that the cordyceps virus and different types of minute mutations in the virus itself on the recorder he even says it himself like yeah this is the greatest chance or the best hope for mankind like no one can refute that Ellie was it based on that alone there's no way logic there can be a seat they didn't give any choices that's what it comes down to and after that initial small choice to either shoot the guy or leave him the fact is that they allowed you to do it. They didn't force you to shoot him. You had a choice to shoot him. Or you could just leave him. It's no different than what Ubisoft did with Watch Dogs. At the very end of the game, they gave you a choice. You could either kill the guy who killed Aiden's niece, or you could leave him alive. And it really it didn't make sense to me. Because throughout the entire game, there's multiple points where they could have gave you an A B scenario. Obviously in the end though, for Watch Dogs it doesn't matter because the way it ended is definitive in that there could be a sequel. I've heard rumors about it. They're saying that there is a Watch Dogs 2 coming. Based on the ending, logically it makes sense and logically it's possible. But for The Last of Us, it's just not logically possible. At the end of the day, it is Naughty Dog's game and they can do whatever they want. 
So they can make us there can be a sequel to the last of us. It's just not gonna make sense. And I know that a majority of the fans that enjoyed The Last of Us, myself included, would be highly disappointed that they did not make it a logical continuation. Just to do it just because it was critically acclaimed and all that. The universe they created I know a lot of people want to go back to it. I get it. It was definitely creative, innovative, and for the fact that they drew the fungus or the virus, they derived it from a real life fungus. I remember seeing it for the first time before The Last of Us came out on Animal Planet. How this fungus was basically, basically possessing ants and doing all types of crazy stuff with them. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, like, yo, what if it could do that to humans? You know, fast forward, The Last of Us gets announced. I see it, I'm like, yo, they got this joint from the, the fungus joint that was killing the ants and stuff. So automatically, that's intrigued. And I was like, yo, that, that was creative. So for me, playing the game was like, I was playing something I thought about. You know, it's almost like I created the game, but that aside, based on that ending, there's no way. Now in comparison, just to prove this point, in comparison to Heavy Rain, Heavy Rain has an ambiguous ending, or endings plural. Like, if Quantic Dream wanted to, they could make a Heavy Rain 2. Let me set it up for you. In Heavy Rain, there's four central characters. Ethan, Madison, my man Jaden, and Scott Shelby. The story revolves around Ethan and Scott Shelby. Madison and Jaden are supporting characters. But we get to see their perspective. We get to play as them and experience what type of character they are. You know, personality wise and all that. Or whatever else you want to throw into it. In The Last of Us, there are four central characters. There's Joel, Tess, Marlene, and Ellie. The story revolves around Joel and Ellie. Tess and Marlene are supporting characters. The difference is, you don't get the play as them. Somebody said that, no disrespect to them. But somebody said that playing as Sarah gave you a perspective of her. It doesn't. You only play with her for a brief moment. And the only perspective you get from her is fear. You see it in her body language. I had her stand at the door because I never, you know, I never saw it before. When Joel told her to stay back, I stayed back. But I put it to the door, and when her neighbor comes to the door, she jumps back from the glass. So her only perspective, the only perspective you get from her in that prologue is she was scared, fear. You know, she wanted her dad. That's it. Versus you playing as Joel and Ellie. In the ending, I'm going to just use Ethan and Scott Shelby since that's what Heavy Rain or the story of Heavy Rain revolves around. Ethan's ending, just two randoms. Ethan's A scenario ending is he saves his son and him and his son move into a penthouse. The B scenario is Ethan and Madison get together. He saves his son, and all three of them move into the penthouse together. So, you see that there is an A-B scenario here. Which one is Ken? Quantic Dream could could say either, either one is Ken. And there's four or five endings per character. So, they could pick from either 
either one of those endings and say, oh, this one was canon. More specifically, it would be logical to do Scott Shelby because Heavy Rain is about a serial killer. In this case, the origami killer. So, in Scott Shelby's A ending, he gets caught and he's killed. They show his grave and the mother of somebody he killed, you know, just despising him and all that. And then in the B scenario, his B scenario is that he gets away, no pun intended, scot-free. And what the ending is called unpunished. And you just see him walking down a crowded street like it's nothing. So if Quantic Dream wanted to, they could say that the unpunished ending was canon and make a heavy rain too. Naughty Dog can't do the same with the last of us. There's no B scenario for them to, to do that for. Now, another reason there logically can't be a sequel is because Naughty Dog did a lot of subtle, blatant, subtle, like in your face, you need to think about this, things with the last of us. Or this is here for you to comprehend or to interpret and then put it all together. Now, The Last of Us implies the end of something, obviously. In this case, it's the last of mankind, the last humans. It's just like my man from Dead Space 3 said, Carver. When Isaac said or asked him, uh, what, do you, what do you mean, The Last of Us? And Carver was like, the last, as in there is no more. So, The Last of Us is definitely the end of something. If you notice the start menu for The Last of Us, it is a window or a room, but the emphasis is on the window. Now, me, first playthrough, I, I didn't pay no attention to it. Most people probably did but if you actually look, but after you play the game, you will realize something is in the window. And sure enough, is Ellie's pocket knife in this window. The question is, why is Ellie's pocket knife in the window? Or questions, the two questions are, why is Ellie's pocket knife in this window? And why is this the screen for the start name? And it is basically answered in the epilogue. At the beginning of the epilogue, you see Ellie looking at the infection site on her arm. As Joel comes back around from the, the car and says, yeah, we're going to have to hike down. Like, we're going to have to walk the rest of the way. Ellie slides up her sleeve quick. And the camera pans to her face. And if you look close... You will see that she actually looks sick. Once they're walking towards the hilltop or whatever you want to call it, cliffside or cliff top, you can say that she's depressed. Sure, I agree. There's some degree of depression with her because you would assume she feels. Like everything they did was for nothing, which it basically was, thanks to Joel. And it's confirmed definitively when they reach the top of the cliff to look down on Tommy's community, camp, whatever you want to call it. When she just point blank asked him, like, swear to me everything you said about the fireflies was true. And Joel does, because what did she say? She says, yeah, my friend was like, you know, she wanted to, to be all poetic and so we lose our minds together. I'm still waiting for my turn. So that's definitely a sign of depression on her part. Going back to before she exits the vehicle, that infection site, it could just be me. It looks way worse than it did at the beginning of The Last of Us. At the very beginning, like when 
they were saying it was two weeks old or whatever the exact time was. It looks like the the blisters or whatever. I think they have a definitive term for it in the game, but the blisters look engorged and the cut or scratch or however she got um make the bite mark or whatever. It looks like it's spreading. It's, you know, it looks way worse. And I, I think that's what the Naughty Dog was trying to emphasize with that, the way they shot that scene, or the way the scene was presented to us as the players. My thing on that is, Ellie was never immune. It just so happens that the Cordyceps virus in her is slower than in other people. So it's a slower growth rate or a slower transformation rate with her versus other people for whatever reason. So her being like that just gave her armor against breathing in the spores. If she got bit or scratched, you know, sustained another infection site, she definitely would have either turned or been killed. It's evident with the way she gets bit in the same fashion as Joel is game over. So the whole time she yeah, she wasn't immune to the cordyceps virus. It just was slow. It was a slow, ultra slow growth rate in her. Or she was able to to remain human longer than other people or the average person that was infected with the virus. So, fast forward to this window. Obviously, this window is in a house that is in Tommy's community. That's the only logical thing that makes sense. A year, two years, maybe more has passed and Ellie transformed into a clicker. At the time, maybe she knew it and she stuck her knife in that windowsill and tried to leave or something. Maybe Joel encountered her while she was trying to leave out or something. He was the first one to get bit and it just spread through the entire community. There's no more stories to tell in The Last of Us. We, they can't give us a test a Marlene perspective is too late. That being said, it's not the end of the Last of Us universe. They can do a pre. In fact, they need to do a pre because the Last of Us is the end of something. We need to see the beginning of it. If you remember, at the beginning of the Last of Us, they said that the virus started in the city so the prequel will take us to the city and in the city I'm thinking from the perspective of a scientist because that's the only thing that kind of, it makes sense to me or a, a rogue scientist a scientist nonetheless either way and they were tampering with the fungus altering his properties or something like that or they didn't know what they was doing they mixed it with something and one of the scientists suits or something had got a cut in it and they breathed in the spores and they was the first they was uh, patient zero and then it just spread from there and in the prequel we would have to they would have to show us what we didn't see in the last of us which is being examined before getting into the quarantine zone, military coming in, living in the quarantine zone, because on my tour of the collapsed quarantine zone that Tess and Joel was in, I noticed people with yellow jumpsuits. So I automatically took it as those were the working people or you know when they had to work that's what they wore 
And you know, Tess and Joel said they had the day off when they were trying to get through the gate. So I figured that's what Joel and Tess were wearing until you know Tess mentions that she was assigned outside work duty, which apparently they had some type of work they did outside the quarantine zone. What it is, I don't know. And even for the yellow jumpsuit people, what type of job was they doing? Because as you can clearly see, they're not doing anything. But you know, whatever they could, uh, they could have been working in the ration line, giving out rations. Either way, so in the prequel, we, they could show us all of that and have us do those jobs, the yellow jumpsuit job. Maybe that's the the starting job, and then get a quote promotion to work in the ration line or to work outside the quarantine zone. And then, of course, fast forward, show the collapse of the quarantine zones. Uh, somebody gets infected in the quarantine zone, and then it's just complete chaos, and the quarantine zone is no more. And then it's back to being a uh, fight for survival. So, yeah, there cannot be a sequel to an ending something that is the end of something the very end of something but there can be a prequel the beginning it's just like a book or a movie you have a beginning and then you have an end so what we need now as far as the last of us universe goes is the beginning and it would definitely have to start in the city they would have to show us the origin of the cordyceps virus how it came about and then the the goal of the last of us was to get ellie to the fireflies obviously i'm stating the obvious i know but it was to get ellie to the fireflies to make a countermeasure against the cordyceps virus the goal of the prequel is is pretty much the same minus ellie so the goal of the prequel would be to somehow come up with a countermeasure against the cordyceps virus in the last of us that goal is realized ellie is that countermeasure or ellie's blood is the countermeasure or the mutation in ellie's blood is the countermeasure it, it, it's almost like the thing the movie john carpenter is the thing they had the thing was the end and then they went back and i can't even think of the uh the prequel's name but how they bridged the two together was genius because at the very end of the prequel of the thing they have the wolf running towards the the base and it's just it's exactly how the thing starts off so they yo ah <laughs> oh, man um yo I'm really I really I can imagine it. I can I can see that like maybe at the end of the prequel of The Last of Us they have a character show up or we see maybe we see Joel driving from you know driving from work to his house. you know to pull up in the driveway and then it fades to black or something like that something real you know something that you can you that bridges in a, a genius way with that being said i'm not gonna take no more of your time i appreciate you listening and you know, as always, I'm always open to other points of view as far as this ending goes. If you have a, a different way you interpret it to where you think there is a possibility, even the slightest possibility, that there could be an, a sequel to The Last of Us, let me know, man. I'd be more than happy to check it out. With that... 
Thanks for listening. Peace.